Okay, Shalom, Shalom. Kwam Yasha Allah, Kuhuluimla, Yahweh Basim Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakahakadash, double honors to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule well, that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. And just want to say the water toward the Akim and Akwaf that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Basim Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. This is Yahanan Nawaf, just coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And, um, Seeing a couple of these Teeth of Wild Beasts of articles, man. This is the New York Post. It says, teen, surf teen surfer dies after he's mauled by a shark in front of his dad. So, you know, that's that's got to be a horrible thing, man. You know what I'm saying? To, you know, your parent watch you get torn apart, you know, so to speak, man. I mean, hey, but what does the scripture say? It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. That's why, you know, we, we say that it's very important that, you know, when you leave in the house... Um, you know, the first thing you should be doing when you get up anyway is praying, you know, at least the Lord's prayer but When you leave the house, you go in places, you're about to do something, you know, you should throw up a prayer, man It's nothing, nothing hard about throwing up a quick prayer, man, to you. How about Shemel Shai? You know, and you got to get away from that white Jesus, man, because white Jesus not doing nothing for nobody Because I'm sure his dad was probably screaming out. He was probably screaming. Um, um Jesus saved me, too anyway And you can see this dude him 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 appear to weigh that much uh, But anyway let's get some of it It says a 15 year old boy Was mauled to death by a shark In front of his in front of his horrified father Yeah I'm sure he was horrified Because what does the scripture say It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands Of the living power man The Lord is terrible among the, the children of men Roughly paraphrasing See they give you this white Jesus. He loves everybody. Crap, man. Hey, hey, the Lord, man, is about to seriously get busy with the entire earth, man. And this is coming soon. Okay, it says, Kai, Call Kai Cawley, who has, seen, who has since been described by loved ones as a talented surfer, was pulled from the water near Ethel Beach. Okay, um, after his leg had been bitten off, by what was believed to be a great white shark. All right, now. You had your damn leg bit off, man. Like, is it, you know them sharks is big, man. Yep, matter of fact, it says this shark was 13 feet long. That's a big-ass um, animal, man. Then it started to head back out to sea. So he just chomped off the guy's leg, man, and just got him a little snack and rolled on about his business, man. It says, I was in waist-deep water and just made the decision to run back chest deep at this point grabbed him and managed to drag him back to shore back to the people on the beach he lucky he didn't get it too i was just, it was just a matter of i didn't want to see his body out at, out to sea so i did what i could yeah man that's that's some that's got to be horrifying for uh, a dad ethel beach is popular yet remote tour spot is located off york peninsula in southern australia you know, um, see, this is that fatness of the earth, man. You know, this is how we can pretty much, this is about the spirit of Esau. They got that fatness of the earth. They're always somewhere off some damn water. The beaches, you know, they got the high rises. You know, they just out here just living in the best places. You see what I'm saying? Anyway, the boy had been on vacation with his family before he was attacked by the sea predator. Loved ones have flooded social media and tributes to the team. After his death, a boy with so much potential, he will hold a place in everyone's heart. Family friends wrote on social media. Of course, you go always get that there. Okay. Locals have since spoken out about the dangers of wildlife in the area, with one local fisherman saying that sharks are a common sight among along uh, Marion Bay. And they probably got signs out there and everything, man. Esau don't care. You got signs out, damn sharks out here, man. I'm sure they got signs. They had they gotta have signs. You know? So at that point, what you're doing is, you know, you're 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 testing Yahweh Bashim Yahwashai. You know, what do Yahweh Shai tell um Satan in the wilderness? Hey, hey, you, hey, tempt not the Lord thy God, roughly paraphrasing. Uh, you you know, you wanna you wanna be on point. Now what the fuck is you doing out there? But see, that's that's Esau. Again, this is a trait of Esau. They're the ones jumping from down planes. Bungee jumping and shit, diving off into the, the deepest ocean they can possibly. They climbing mountains, and that's why the scripture talks about um um him being a cunning hunter, 
and Jacob was a plain man. See, Jacob just, we just chill. Now, don't get me wrong. It, you, you do have some so-called black people. They'll go surfing if they live in some of those areas, you know, where, it, you know, they have sunny, you know, sunny weather and beaches and things of that nature. But me personally, I've never seen on TV like, you know, that looks fun. I would like to go surfing. I've never I've never thought of that, that I can never I, I can't remember ever thinking to myself like, you know what? That seems like that's fun. I want to go somewhere and surf. Nah, man. OK, he says um, we've seen some pretty big bronzies in the sea in the area but that's normal here that's why i'm saying that they had to have some signs around somewhere if it's normal he told the local publication i went to take the boat out and the road to ethel's was blocked by, by rangers there's no cell phone reception out there in, the, in in the park so we didn't know what had happened until we got back to the, the bay okay just two weeks before his tragic death crawley who who boasted a uh, 146 ranking under 18 surfers in the country was named most outstanding groom performer by his local sea sea view road board riders surf club groom or groomette in terms for young surfers under the age of 18 surfing south australia paid tribute to the boy on the on, the, on thursday yeah me out of here though we are devastated to learn that a young, talented, and dearly loved member of our surfing community was was the surfer involved in the attack. Okay. Our utmost deepest sympathies are with the family. Okay, it's the same stuff with that. But anyway, you know what, though? Because like I said, it's, you know, it's more of these stories, man. Snorkeler accidentally catches moment. Shark bites off his leg on video. Teen surfer mauled to death, okay, in front of his dad. That's the same one. Man films aftermath of shark attack that claimed his leg. That might be the same thing. American woman in Australia posts terrifying videos of getting stalked by hissing birds. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the animals is, is not liking um, Esau, man. Uh, hold on, let me go. It says hard details emerge as as boy six years old getting ready for school is mauled to death by dogs in family friends home. See that? Six years old. He's just getting ready to go to school. Nobody's expecting that. Everybody up, you know, he probably trying, you know, getting coffee, probably making making his ass a little bowl of cereal and, and, and death strikes, man. That's how the Lord man, I'm telling you, man. Mom twenty six dies in bloody shark attack in front of her daughter. Five. As Beast rips off her leg. Damn, he's having a leg fest out here. I, I guess the legs is probably because I, I guess you're kicking away. You're trying to, you know, if you're familiar with swimming, you know how to swim. You know, you, you, you generally you kick away. So maybe that's why they, they're grabbing at the legs like that. Six-year-old boy dies in attack by two massive Great Danes. God dang. Family of pregnant Texas teen likely found dead. Attack brothers. Alleged killer in court. Okay, that's something different. Uh, police dog bites teen suspect leaves flesh hanging. Yeah, okay, man. I seen a story the other day with a model. I know I guess the dog jumped up and bit her in her damn face and bit her damn lips off, so she couldn't model no more. But anyway, let's go into the scriptures, man. I just, you know, I see these these um, articles and I just find it amazing, man. I find it amazing, you know, just how the Lord can can you know can have somebody wake up and and his 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 demise has already been designed from the beginning of you know his you know even before his parents got together, before his grandparents got together, before his great great grandparents got together. The Lord had already set up the way that he was going to pass away, man. That's crazy. Um, again, like I said, you know, it's, it's best to pray, man. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. See now that I, even I, am he. And there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any. That can deliver out of my hand. 
So it wouldn't have been nothing his dad could have done. It wouldn't have been nothing they could have done to change the vacation trip or any of that stuff, man. It would have it would have happened anyway. You see? Because the Lord, he matter of fact, let's get that um that Proverbs. Chapter 20 and verse 24. And it goes off into uh, man's goings uh, of the Lord. It reads, man's goings of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? See, our steps are already ordered, man. There's no such thing as no, no free will and all that other shit, man. Matter of fact, so like, let's go into the Apocrypha real quick to get down to the boogie on that. Them teeth of wild beasts, man. And see... These scriptures, I've never heard these scriptures before in the church. You know, what a lot of these churches, they don't they don't even deal with the apocrypha anyway. So it would be, you know, something that you wouldn't more likely hear. But even like Deuteronomy 32 and 39 that I just read. You know, I I've never heard that in the church before. I've never heard that the Lord, he's the one that kills and makes a lie. And that's also in um, 1 Samuel 2 and 6 as well. Never heard that before in the, in the church, man. This right here. It's classic. When I when I first came into the truth and I seen these, I'm like, oh, whoa. This is um, Ecclesiasticus, also known as the Book of Sirach. If you got the 1611 King James Bible, if you're new to this truth, get you a 1611 King James Bible. You can download the app. They got different ones, you know, just put in, um, you know, 1611 King James um, with Apocrypha, um, you know, in the search engine as far as your Play Store. You should be able to get one, you know, or unless you want to just go, you can buy it separately, the little red book. Or well, you can get a 1611 King James and it's got those books already in there. Now, it's a little hard. Well, I wouldn't say hard to read, but it's a little it's a little hard to read for new newcomers. You know what I'm saying? Because of the way that the letters are set up. You know, it's like old English. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it can be a little challenge reading it. But anyway, this is um, Ecclesiasticus 39, 28. It says there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. And the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So the Lord created spirits for vengeance to appease his wrath. You see? Fire and hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. So when people die in those ways, it was, you know, it's, it's, it's an avengeance. The Lord is, is getting vengeance on that person. And you can say, well, what did this 15 year old do? And you don't know. He could, hey, you know, a lot of the times, you know, um, when it, um, you know, the scriptures talks about honoring thy mother and thy father. I, I kind of think of that scripture, too, as well, when it comes to younger, you know, teens, you know, especially getting a, a, a brutal death like that, you know, could have stormed out of the house talking all kinds of shit to their mom or their dad or, you know, you had to be very careful of those types of things, too, you know, because because the Lord can set you right on up. And a lot of the times, too, you know, and that comes with those parents. They be all they worship these damn kids. They don't they don't check them. They don't put them in check about nothing. They just running about the earth and just, you know. Just just, you know, just don't know what's going to become. They don't have no damn direction whatsoever. Just wake up every day, just eat and just, you know, do what they feel like they want to do. But it says teeth, of wild beast. That's the one right there. Teeth, of wild beast and scorpions serpents and the sword punning sheen the wicked to destruction see that teeth the wild beast man they shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is and when their time has come they shall not transgress his word so these spirits they can't go back on their assignment the lord give them the assignment they can't be like well lord he's 15 years old he's looking promising he got a you know, he's pretty talented with the with the surfboard. You know, he can he, he splashed waves, you know, and he's, you know, he's, a you know, he has so much potential. They don't they don't do that, man. They 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 rejo it says they rejoice in his commandment. And then you got uh, let me see here. Uh, what's that one? In first Kings. Uh, that might be Salakia. First Kings 22. We'll start at verse 19. Now, this is a situation where the king, um, his name is Ahab, how the Lord set him up. So we know that the Lord, he's the one that's in control of the setup. He's in control of who lives and who dies. We just read that in Deuteronomy 32 and 39. It says, uh, verse 19, and he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. And all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. 
And the Lord said, and that's another thing too, the Lord created everything in tools. He created the wicked, he created good, he created righteous, he created unrighteous. You know, up, down, wet, dry, you know, the Lord, he created everything in tools. It's a complete balance with the Lord. So he, he, you know, he created life, he created death, you know, he created male, he created female, positive, negative, you name it, sky, ground, anything, is, if it's, it's, it's overall everything, it has a, an exact opposite to it. So the Lord, he created spirits of vengeance and he created spirits that, you know, or angels that will, you know, assist you in, 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 in saving you, so to speak, or leading you type of deal, you know? Okay, but um, so... As you can see, it says that the angels, they were on his right hand and on his left. So you got a left hand side, you got a right hand side. It says, and the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. So he's having a council with these angels on the right hand side and the angels on the left hand side. And there came forth a spirit. Remember, the spirits of vengeance. And there came forth the spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said, and the Lord said unto him, wherewith? So the Lord, like, how you going to do it? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and, pre and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So the Lord is, is you know, and you, as you read on through the story, of course, he got the business. You know, he got deleted. But the Lord <laughs> set it up, man. Clearly set it up. And again, you know what I'm saying? Look, let's get that one uh, in the Apocrypha where it talks about the Lord created everything in tools. Because like, you know, when you hear these scriptures, you know, because I never heard them when I was in, you know, Christian church. So these scriptures are very important because they're, they're, they're simple, but they're, they're deep. This is um, Ecclesiasticus 33, also in the Apocrypha. I'm going to start at verse 13. It says, as the clay is in the potter's hand to fashion it at his pleasure, so man is in the hand of him that made him to render to them as liketh them best. So the Lord created everything just the way he wanted it. Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High and there are two and two, one against another. So the Lord created everything. He created one against another. So he created life. He created death. He gave that young man life <laughs> and then he gave him his death. You know, it's simple. And you can get on. Uh, let's see. Let's get Isaiah. Now, I just find stories like that fascinating. Like, you know, like none of us know what our lot is. None of us know how we're, we're going to go out. But, you know, hey, man, we're praying for mercy from Yahweh about Shem Yahweh Shai. Because it is a fearful thing. To fall. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine that. But, you know, I pray that the Lord would not even let me be stupid enough to place myself in that particular type of situation. That's silly. I'm not going out surfing, man. I, I don't see no use in all that there. You know, Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. See? So the Lord is the one. He created that situation for that for that guy, man. And you got another one, um, Amos. I like this one, too. Like I said, again, you know, and these are regular in the 66 books. These pastors, man, don't bring out these scriptures, man. Amos 3 and 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord have not done it? See that? And can you imagine the chatter? Can you imagine the talk in the town? Can you imagine everybody crowding around and talking about that shit? They didn't drag me back up on the beach in horror. You know, people was horrified to see his damn leg gone. He obviously bled out. And hey, that's a hey, the Lord is terrifying, man. I'm telling you, man. So, hey, when, when, when. All I can say is, man, just a hey, repent and have a healthy fear of your how about Shemiah was shy, man. And those are the true names of the father and son. We're going to keep hitting them over the head with that, man. The true name of the father is Yahweh, which means that he exists or the existing one. In the true name of his son, our Lord and Savior that's coming. He would be a so-called black man if he walked the earth today. His name is Yahawashai, which means he's the Savior or deliverer in Paleo-Hebrew. We're not praying to some white guy. You know, we're not praying to some blonde-haired, blue-eyed white guy, man. His name is our Lord's name is not Jesus, man. The letter J wasn't even invented when he walked the earth. 
There was even there, there wasn't even no English language then. There's no letter J, no letter E, O, U, or V in the Hebrew alphabet. And the letter J was invented in 1524. So we know they wasn't calling the Lord Jesus when he walked the earth, man. That's that's you can look into the history of that. And you can clearly see how they came up with it. All you got to do is you can uh, hey, stroke on Google, man. Google when was the letter J um, invented? It's our time to awake out of sleep, man, and, 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 and get right for real, for real, man. Because the Lord is about to, this right here, that, that's small work. A nigga losing his leg, that's small work to the Lord. That ain't nothing to the Lord, man. It's about to be people that's about to be fucking uh, Sarah Connor out here, man. Straight sizzle to add to nothing but dusty ashes, man. So, just wanted to touch on this for a hot sec. I pray that the lesson was edifying. Kwame Shalom.